Well, we're back again to complete Romans chapter 3. And that was the good news, as I promised. And the good news that we are going to see, open your Bibles to Romans chapter 3, and we're going to start around verse 21. The good news is justification is by faith. In verse 21, it can be paraphrased this way. But now, in this age of grace, a righteousness, a new kind of righteousness has been revealed, but not one that depends on the law. You see, today people want a righteousness by the law and by works. But Paul has already proved in the first part of chapter 3 that the law condemns and can never save uh, grace and righteousness was seen in the Old Testament for example when we look at Abraham Abraham was declared righteous because he believed God and, and he believed God by faith if you read in the Old Testament Habakkuk Habakkuk says to the people of God, the just shall live by faith. And when you read Romans chapter 9, and we'll get there at some point, you'll see that Israel had missed this righteousness by faith. You see, as we get to the next verses, chapter, verses 22 to 26, we're going to learn that salvation is available through faith alone and in Christ alone. Notice how often in verse 23, Paul uses the word faith. For all have sinned, he writes in verse 23. For all have sinned and are constantly coming short of the glory of God. Last time we spoke, I talked about all. And we have to ask ourselves, well, who is all? All is all. That's, that's, that's everybody. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. This is what Paul writes in verse 23. Then Paul introduces several important points or terms, if you will. The first term that he introduces is justified, meaning Declare righteous before God. In God's sight, through the merits of what Christ did, justification is God's righteousness imputed or credited, if you will, to our account. It's nothing that we've done. Christ did it all. The second term he uses is redemption means deliverance from sin and its penalty by the payment of a price. The price that was paid was the blood at Calvary. The third term he uses is propitiation. It means deliverance from sin, excuse me, means Christ's sacrifice satisfied. God's holy law, thus making it possible for God to forgive sinners who remain just himself. God's justice has been satisfied through the blood of Jesus Christ. Now he may look with kindness and grace upon a lost world, or better put, in those who've accepted the atoning work of Jesus Christ at Calvary. Then you look at verse 24 of chapter 3, and the justification was free, freely given to each of us. And that's good news. You've heard me use that term over and over again. The good news. The good news is not by works. That's good news. There's nothing I can do. There's not enough work that I can do to be saved and be just in God's eyes. 
There's no gift that I can give or prayer that I can pray, but freely receive the grace that God gives me. I think the song, one of the songwriters put it this way. In my hands, no price I bring. Simply to the cross I cling. Amen. And then you're saved by his amazing grace. In it is in this letter, in verse 26, that Paul explains how God can be both just and the justifier. And, and the answer, how, how does he do it? How, how can God be just and the justifier? Well, the answer is the cross. Peter writes about it in 1 Peter 2.24. Let me read what Peter wrote. He wrote, when Jesus died, he bore our sin in his body. And by his stripes, we are healed. And therefore, Christ paid the price God's law had demanded. But it didn't end there. It didn't end at the cross. Because the Bible says that he was buried and he laid there all day set Friday, all night Friday, all day Saturday, but early Sunday morning. Oh, hallelujah. He got up with all power in his hand. Because he got up, the result is Jesus Christ is alive today and is able to save all who will believe today. Verse 25 of that verse chapter teaches us that in the time before the full revelation of the gospel of Christ, God appeared to be unjust by passing over the sins of mankind and forgiving such people as Noah, who was a drunk, Abraham, who he just called because he called him, Enoch, because we were all born in sin. And that's true. He did send wrath in some cases to some but generations of sinners seem to escape God's judgment as well. Let me give you one example in 2 Samuel where David committed a great sin. The Bible puts it this way. It was when kings go out to war and, and David stayed home. You, you see, sometimes we find ourselves in the wrong place. But, but David saw this woman. Her name was Bathsheba. He, he, he decided that he wanted her. And then from that sin, he, he, he committed a murder. Not only did he commit adultery, and not only did he commit a murder with Uriah, but the law demanded that David be killed. But see, we often look at this, and, and, I, and I want to explain to you before I go to the next point how sin devastates not only a nation, but it can devastate a family as well. You see, Uriah wasn't the only one who died uh, during that war that day. There were other soldiers who lost their lives also not because of what Uriah had done, not because of what the soldiers had done, but what David had done. But God's mercy, even though the law required God, David, to, to be put to death, God gave him grace. And that's what we're all under right now, is God's amazing grace. Now, getting back to the point God is able to save us because he knew that the cross was coming. He would give a full display of his wrath against sin and yet through Christ's death provide a redemption for sin that had nearly been covered by the blood of sheep and goats. And you'll read that in Hebrews chapters 9 through 10 when you have time. Finally, in verses 27 through 31, we are accepted by faith. Now, 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 let's hear the conclusion of the whole matter of chapter three. 
the Jews had nothing to boast of because all sinners are justified by faith and not by the works of the law. So there was nothing for them to boast in. Now, if justification is by the law, then he is a God of the Jews only. Why? Because only Israel had the law. But God is also the God of the Gentiles. Therefore, both Jews and Gentiles are saved the same way. By faith alone, in Christ alone. And this simple, this simple means of salvation does not, and I repeat, does not cancel the law. For the law demanded death for sin. And Christ died for our sins. So the gospel establishes the law. God's law reveals my need for grace. And God's grace enables me to obey the law. There you have chapter three. The next time we'll look at chapter four. May God bless you. May God keep you. And may he cause his face to shine upon you and grant you peace in Jesus' name. Amen.